Now, this is a video that you probably did not expect me to make, but I like to consider my channel open to anything that should be looked through a skeptical lens, especially if it's anti-science, and I just have to have enough to say about the subject. And this meets all of those criteria. And that, as you can tell by the title and whatnot, is e-cigs, or e-cigarettes, or vapes, or electronic cigarettes. I'm going to use all those terms interchangeably, they mean the same thing. There are a lot of people for the use of e-cigs, and a lot of people against the use of e-cigs. And it's become political because they're trying to regulate it, or trying to keep it from being regulated. So, what I found is a website, or should I say propaganda campaign, that is strongly against the use of e-cigs, and tries to scare anyone out of using them. And now I'm going to spoil the whole video for you right here, it is all false information. So let's dive into it and see exactly how wrong they get it. So while we're on the main page, let's go to the health section. Some call e-cigs healthier. Sure, if inhaling toxic chemicals sounds healthy to you, read on to learn about the health risks of e-cigs and find out why harmless water vapor is the most inaccurate description ever. Well, you're right. It's not water vapor. It's not water, and it's not vapor. It's technically an aerosol, primarily of vegetable glycerin and propylene glycol with added flavorings and optional nicotine. Now, they do mention this later on the website, so they don't get the absolute basics wrong, which is good. And no, it is not entirely harmless, actually, but it is mostly harmless. Adolescent brains are soaking up sweet, addictive nicotine. E-cigarettes are more rampant among high school teenagers than ever, as are the flavors they can choose from. With thousands upon thousands of flavors and counting those flavors, they're often filled with toxic nicotine, and teenagers are even more susceptible to its highly addictive properties. What they're saying here is essentially true. Nicotine is harmful and potentially fatal if you get enough of it, but you are not going to get exposed to high enough levels by vaping it. If you were, it would be deeply unpleasant and nobody would continue doing it. You would essentially have to drink the e-liquid. That's what you put in the vape to vaporize. Vaporize. Or if you got it all over yourself and didn't wash it off because nicotine is transdermal. And yeah, adolescents are more susceptible to addiction and they build up a higher tolerance. But here's the thing though, an adult would be able to handle the e-liquid safely. They would know not to drink it, and they would know to be careful not to spill it, and if they do, clean it up and wash it off as soon as possible. They would know that. So. What I'm proposing is that we make it illegal to distribute e-cigs and e-liquids to those who are under the age of majority. Oh wait, it is! It is illegal to sell e-cigs to those under 18 or 19 or 21, depending on where you live. If there are underage people vaping, that's because it's too accessible, and that would be because either the laws themselves, whether they have loopholes or not, or if the laws are actually being enforced. So if you don't want underage people vaping, then crack down on those laws. There is another factor though. A large portion of people who are turning to nicotine are doing so to self-medicate anxiety, depression, as well as other issues. So maybe this could be a mental health thing, or do we want to completely ignore that and act like that doesn't exist and this isn't part of a bigger problem that we don't completely understand? Do we just want to get rid of e-cigs and that'll magically solve all our problems? Because, you know, underage smoking, tobacco smoking, was never a thing in the United States. That was never an issue. They can suffer from the long-term neurological effects that nicotine addiction brings, in addition to teeing up their susceptible brains for addiction to other drugs like cocaine, according to the U.S. Surgeon General report. Ah, the gateway drug hypothesis. Not anywhere near enough evidence to support this, and for you to state it as fact. Sure, there may be a relationship between nicotine addiction and using hard drugs, but 
That doesn't mean that one causes the other. The US Surgeon General report doesn't present near enough evidence for this either. Some supporting evidence, yes, but not near enough to be conclusive. And the Surgeon General's site just appears to be more baseless fear-mongering. By the way, the Surgeon General is nominated by the US President and then confirmed by the Senate, and since this is America, that means that anything the Surgeon General says could very well be politically motivated, and that's the sort of thing that we get when public health is capitalized. But I digress. But I can play that cherry-picking game too, you know. According to the PHE, that is Public Health England, part of the UK government, where they don't capitalize on public health, nicotine is not a significant health hazard. Nicotine does not cause serious adverse health effects and is not carcinogenic. The doses of nicotine delivered by electronic cigarettes are therefore extremely unlikely to cause significant short- or long-term adverse events. And later, experimentation with electronic cigarettes is most likely to occur predominantly in the same group that currently experiment with tobacco, as indeed is suggested by recent US data. So it would seem that if adolescents couldn't vape underage, then they would be smoking underage. So do you want to take away the mostly harmless option and leave them with the only option of what we know causes cancer, heart disease, lung problems, etc.? Oh, I get it. Since this is America, the answer to that question is whatever gives you more money. Since, again, this is all political, and we'll get to that later. E-juice has been proven to effectively prevent immune cells from doing their job. No, not quite. They cite one study where they show that e-liquid kills one type of white blood cell in a lab setting, not within the human body, and not with an aerosol or vapor form. Not only that, but the type of white blood cell that they used in the study, neutrophils, die normally after ingesting pathogens and foreign material. Not anywhere near enough evidence to be making bold claims with. And besides, in the study they focused on cinnamaldehyde, which forms naturally in cinnamon. So if this was an issue, then you should never eat anything with cinnamon ever. But lucky for us, cinnamaldehyde has already been studied enough and is not a health hazard. Vapors love flavors, but their hearts don't. Studies done at the University of Louisville found that e-juice flavors negatively affect the heart. Not only did they cite a magazine, but they cited a magazine that says there's still more research that needs to be done. The article also cites one study, not the multiple that you claimed, and in that study, and I quote, these effects were significantly attenuated or abolished upon heating. Now, I don't know if you know this, but e-cigs heat up the e-liquid. E-cigs do not cause heart disease but tobacco does. Now, don't get me wrong, if you already have heart disease, then you shouldn't do either, because nicotine is a stimulant, much in the same way that caffeine is. E-cigs damage blood vessels. Preliminary results. Now, you may need to pull out a dictionary for this one, but I could stop you at preliminary and just move on. But yeah, I'll grant that nicotine does cause arterial stiffness, raised blood pressure, and raised heart rate. But so does caffeine. Are we looking to ban caffeine? Or, or flavored sodas that have caffeine in them? No, we're not. Look, nicotine is a stimulant. That's what a stimulant does. And it's been shown that this is not harmful unless you have your own health concerns. And even then, cigarettes are so much worse when it comes to this. But you're not going to mention that, are you? Popcorn lung sounds delicious. Caused by diacetyl, diacetyl is found in e-liquid. Okay, of course they would mention popcorn lung. Okay, yes. True. Granted. Diacetyl is dangerous to inhale in large amounts. But vapors don't typically inhale more than the NIOSH work safety limits. And besides, there's more diacetyl in regular cigarettes. So harm reduction is still very much a thing. Though 
I do agree that we really should not be using diacetyl in e-liquid, and banning diacetyl in aerosols is not out of the question. I just don't think that this is a good reason to ban all e-cigarettes or all flavors. Do yourself a favor and don't image search for exploding e-cigs. E-cigs are the bomb that could go off in your mouth. Lots of health risks posed by vaping are due to chronic use, but here's one that could happen the very first time someone puffs on an e-cig. They're prone to exploding. Read on for some chilling stories, and be very grateful we spared you the gruesome photos. Yeah, of course. They're pulling out everything that vapors have been hearing forever. Yes, vapes, or rather their batteries, can explode. But whenever it does, it's most likely user error. See, vapes don't use batteries that you may be more familiar with, like double A's or whatnot. Instead, they use batteries kind of like this. This is an 18650, although you can find other sizes like the 2700 and whatnot. Okay, recording this again because I didn't get everything completely correct the first time around, but these are lithium ion batteries or related batteries. And when those kinds of batteries fail, well, you know. See, in vapes, we use unprotected batteries, so these batteries don't have built-in protection from overcharging, over-discharging, short-circuit, etc. And we can't have those within the batteries themselves because we want a higher output. And the protection for these batteries are within the mod, that's the part of the vape that you put the batteries in, and within the external charger that you should be using to charge these, because they are rechargeable. Luckily, battery safety is one of the first things you come across when learning about vaping, and these explosions come from stupid mistakes, like using damaged batteries, or using batteries with torn wraps, or not knowing how to use a mechanical mod, or using a mod that may be a cheap Chinese knockoff, which you should never do or just having them in your pocket or in your purse willy-nilly without having a proper battery case. Look, bottom line, just learn what you're doing and you'll be fine. And the rate of these explosions compared to just how many people there are out there vaping is really, really low. But thanks for your chilling stories. You're really doing wonders for the anti-science cloud. Crowd, not cloud. I just have clouds on my mind. Okay, so I don't have enough time to cover everything on this page, so I'm just gonna hit a couple more things that we hear all the time. Propylene glycol, also used in antifreeze. This chemical can cause eye, throat, and airway irritation. Okay, yeah, true. PG is found in antifreeze, but it's only found in certain forms of antifreeze. Non-toxic forms of antifreeze because of its low toxicity. Look, all this means is that PG lowers the freezing point of water. That's it. That's all it means. And as for irritation, yeah, PG is actually an irritant, but hardly. It's only minimally irritative. Now, some may have an allergy or intolerance to PG, that does happen sometimes, but for those people, you can find liquids without any PG and just use all VG instead. Mmm, formaldehyde. Okay, sure, vaping actually does produce formaldehyde, believe it or not. But it's only extremely minute amounts. It's not much more than you breathe in normal, everyday air. And there is magnitudes more formaldehyde in tobacco smoke. And the case is very similar for every other particle that they have listed here. And you know the saddest thing, and also the most laughable thing about all of this, is that this site was launched by the California Department of Public Health. They act like they're fighting big tobacco, but they're not. They're really not. In fact, they're helping them out. This is exactly what big tobacco would want. See, e-cigarettes are a fairly new and fairly open market, and the top brands and companies like Aspire, Juul, Smock, Vaporesso, 
they are not owned by tobacco companies. They're not run by tobacco companies. They are not tied with tobacco companies. So essentially what's happened is new people have came, established companies, and taken away some of the market of big tobacco. So let's say that you're big tobacco. What would you do in this situation? Well, you would try to get rid of the competition. You would try to instill fear, make it think that it's worse than cigarettes when it's really not. You would try to pass laws to get less people on e-cigs. You would try to ban flavors so that e-cigs would only taste like air. You would raise taxes so that e-cigs would be just as expensive as cigarettes, if not more. You would try to get them banned completely, so that when anybody needs their sweet, sweet nicotine fix, they can only come to Big Tobacco. Now, they are then killing the competition, killing the free market, and quite frankly, killing people by limiting them to the only option of cancer sticks, things that we know cause cancer, things that we know cause heart disease, lung failure, all this sorts of stuff. But if you're big tobacco, then you have a lot of money and you want to keep it that way. And ad campaigns like this are a huge part of that. Now there is a positive takeaway from this. Of all the people that have a strong opinion on this, it seems like most of them actually know more of what they're talking about. In fact, when this website was launched, in the same hour, I believe, another website was launched called Not Blowing Smoke. And Not Blowing Smoke is pretty much the antithesis of Still Blowing Smoke. And it seems like they have a lot more support and have had a lot more traffic as well. So, there are some places that have already enacted bans, like flavor bans or ridiculous taxes, but it seems like most places are simply not following suit. And if you care about public health and giving people an alternative to one of the leading preventable causes of death, then you can be part of the pro-vaping crowd. Not cloud. Crowd. Now, I, I want to make this clear. I'm not saying that vaping is completely 100% safe and harmless. I'm not saying that anyone and everyone should just start vaping, whether they've ever smoked in their life or not. You are still breathing in an aerosol that, you know, your body was not made for. Nicotine is still an addictive chemical. But vapes, or electronic cigarettes, are much much safer than any tobacco product.